Marburg, Hendra, rabies, and of course the coronaviruses. In fact, bats carry over 60 zoonotic viruses, that is, viruses that cause disease in humans. Only rats carry more, but bats still win on viruses per species. On average, each bat species carries 1.8 zoonotic viruses, whereas rats only carry 1.48. The question is, why? Why do so many of our viruses come from bats? And is there anything we can do about it? Diversity. This is the simplest reason. There's just a lot of bats. In fact, bats represent the fifth of all mammal species, with over 1,300 species recognised. So the chances are, if you were going to pick any random mammal to carry a virus, it would be a bat. Only rats carry more zoonotic viruses, and they represent a quarter of all mammal species. We know that in general, species diversity correlates with virus diversity. Lifestyle. Just looking at how bats live gives us a few clues. First, bats are highly social and congregate in large numbers in close proximity. This is a perfect mixing environment for viruses. Second, bats fly, which enables them to cover large distances, especially when they're migrating and spread viruses over large distances. Third, bats have exceptionally long lifespans given their small size. Rodents of a similar size live up to two years, whereas some species of bats can live up to 40 years. This gives them plenty of time to spread their viruses. Immunology. Of all the many viruses that bats host, only rabies is known to actually kill them. The reason why bats can host so many viruses without suffering any ill effects is not straightforward. They have strange immune systems which seem to be lacking in several bits we thought were important. In particular, bats have a suppressed sting response. Sting stands for stimulator of interferon genes. Interferons are crucial pro-inflammatory mediators of their innate immune system. So why might a suppressed sting response be beneficial? Well, even in humans, it's often not the virus itself that kills you, but an exaggerated immune response to the virus. It's called a cytokine storm. So it's theorised that a suppressed sting response in bats might allow their immune systems to fight viruses without overreacting. In fact, we know that a crucial pro-inflammatory cytokine called tumor necrosis factor alpha is suppressed in bats. Despite this, we also know that bats continue to maintain unusually high levels of type 1 interferons, which specifically target viruses. So it seems that bat immune systems are constantly primed to react to viruses, such that they can spring into action much more quickly than the immune systems of other mammals. But because of this, they never completely eradicate a virus, and viruses therefore continue to hang about at low levels, too low to cause illness. Ecology. Although the bat immune system allows them to carry many viruses, this doesn't actually increase the chance of them spilling over into humans. The single most important reason why bats carry so many zoonotic viruses is that they tend to be keystone species, i.e. species which hold their ecosystems together like glue. Bats are a critical component of the food web. They feed on insects, fruit and the blood of other mammals and are eaten by hawks, weasels and even arthropods like centipedes and spiders. Of particular note is the role they play in pollination as they are a lot less fussy than bees. They also play a crucial role in seed dispersal. All the while, bats are dribbling, defecating, urinating throughout their environment frequented by other animals, and they are therefore receiving and transmitting viruses all the time. Bats just interact with everything. So what do we do about it? Well, to reiterate, bats are keystone species, so-called because like a keystone in an arch, if you remove it, everything falls apart. We rely on bats for pest control, pollination and many other things, so killing them is not the solution. What we can do is stay away from them. Stay away from where bats live, because if you don't come into contact with them, you can't catch their viruses. So you can ban the so-called wet markets which sell bat meat. You can ban deforestation, because the destruction of a bat's natural habitat forces it to move closer to where humans live. Until we do these things, we're going to continue to see new zoonotic viruses from bats and we're going to get new pandemics.